come on, come on. Let's give God praise in this place. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth and give glory to his name. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, God. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you just grab the hand of your neighbor? Glory to God. Before we get into the word, we just do as we usually do on Sundays we come to connect with God but we also come to connect with each other as well so as we stand in an agreement on today we're standing in agreement with each other we're standing in intercession for each other hallelujah God we thank you for this day we stand in your presence and God as we connect with our brothers and sisters God, we, we are releasing faith to them. God, there's so many who have so many needs on today, but God, we know that you can do the needed thing. And God, we pray for those who are ill and experiencing challenges, physical challenges in this place those who are watching online. God, we dispatch your angels to them at this moment. Mm. God, we pray for those who are in hospitals right now. God, you would touch and deliver them from trouble. God, we're praying for those who are experiencing the effects of the hurricane. And God, we've been praying even now for our family and our friends in the southern region, in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. God, that you would even turn the storm. Hallelujah. And God, even as they go through it, God, give them peace. Be their shelter, even during this storm. And God, we're going to continue to rely upon you. We're going to continue to rely upon your word. We're going to continue to rely upon your presence. Because God, we know that it is in you. There is no other name that we can even be saved. And so, God, we call on your name. We call on your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus over all of our circumstances. Hallelujah. That he would, it would lift up a banner of protection and safety. God, we know that you reign. And God, we're trusting in you. We're relying upon your word. We thank you. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be worthy. Be worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe, I believe that it is God, God was just ministering to me. He was saying, your praise has the potential to turn your, situ your situation around. So as you go, starting even at this moment into the rest of this week, let your praise be that thing that fuels the situation. And before you know it, it's going to turn whatever your situation is. It's going to change the trajectory. Whatever it was meant to come in your direction. Start to give praise to God for it even now. Start
are preparing your mind for it even now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prepare your mind. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Your praise is going to change the trajectory even of the, the plot of the enemy. Some things that have been, have, have been assigned to your life. If you just, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm not playing no games. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, if you keep a praise in your mouth, keep a praise in your mind, keep a praise in your body, you can practice your praise at home. You don't have to wait and, and dance publicly. You can dance at home. As a matter of fact, some of us need to really dance at home so we can do a pr pr practice dance so when we get here, we'll have a perfected praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we get in his presence, it's something that happens when the saints get together. And when the saints get together and we start praising together, something happens in the atmosphere. Something just, it just doesn't change for us, but it changes for our neighbors. It changes for those who are connected to us. It changes for, for our family members who are in other states. Hallelujah. So keep a praise in your mouth keep a praise in your hands keep a praise in your feet hallelujah glory to god let your praise change your situation glory to god hallelujah glory to god and sometimes you gotta just hook up with some other people if you're going through something Neighbor, why don't you help me praise the Lord? Because I need some help right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And sometimes you have to do an intercessory praise. You got to praise God for the people who you know are going through. It's just not about us. But it's for people that we're standing in a gap for. For them right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep them while they're in it. Help them to go through their process. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm. God, feel your presence. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As we prepare to go to the word on today, we just want to, uh, again, just uh, lift up various names that as you pray on this week, Evangelist Barbara Gaskins, that you would just lift up her name, Mother Luella Thomas, Sister Jasmine Thompson, uh, Deacon Clinton Venable, Ariel Harris, Sister Ruby West, Sister Deidre, um, Brother J.R., who I just saw this morning, he's going to be going in for a procedure on this week. Um, 
Uh, I know that I'm missing some names, but please forgive me. Don't just charge in my head, not my heart right now. I know there's some other persons. Um, we're thanking God again for those who are going through um, seasons of challenges. But we know that even on the, as you go through your season of challenge, God has victory on the other side of what you're going through. I declare it to be so. <laughs> I declare it to be so. We shall not be defeated. We're not going under. But we shall be victorious at every step. We may not feel like it, but I declare unto you that you shall be victorious. Matter of fact, I hear victory in the air. I speak victory in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. To counteract the plans and the devices of the enemy. You know, the enemy, he comes with all kinds of devices to, 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 to keep us uh, um, uh, in, in low places. and our, it, it tries to affect our minds, but you got to speak the word. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to call your attention today back to uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter number 9, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, and I promise not to keep you long today, I promise not to keep you long, I do thank God for each person responding to the 10 o'clock time, amen. amen, praise God again for our guests as well, worshiping with us, amen. All right, so I'm going to need the AV team to work with me this morning because my, um, my iPad has died on me, and um, so my, my notes uh, are gone, so I need y'all to pray. Amen. It's going to be God and me and you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I might as well just go and close this up. It has died on me. It started acting funny, y'all, and I, I didn't pay attention to it, and, uh, but that's all right. God's teaching me a lesson. I'll just close it. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. That's why it's good to have the backup. Matter of fact, the first choice. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I want to read it from the version that, um, that I have that I sent to you, which I believe is the Amplified version. I don't have the Amplified version here, so if y'all could put that on the screen. Thank you. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 26 and 27. And it says, therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating the air, just shadow boxing. But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached, and this is the Apostle Paul talking, after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. Amen. I want to just continue today the, uh, the thought that I started on last Sunday, uh, and I want you just to ask your neighbor, how are you running? And this is part two. How are you running? How are you running? As we uh, consider, again, this passage, and I need you to put that, uh, I believe, second or third screen back up. That's, that's going to help me as my guide. Amen. Praise God. I, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Amen. As we want to, I wanted to recap uh, what God has spoke to us on last week, and he spoke some things to us from uh, this passage. The first, first couple of things that he spoke to us was that we need to run with a renewed mindset. Run with a new, renewed mindset. You know, the enemy, he tries to Again, as I just said, attack our minds, to attack things that, uh, things that we think. And what we think, we say. So the enemy, he tries to attack our mind. He tries, tries to uh, bring um, crazy thoughts. And that's why I said you got to speak the word yeah. at every point in your life. 
And the second thing that we talked about on last week was running with discipline. Say run with discipline. God wants us, as, I, as we just read in the, in the scripture, he wants us to run in a way that we don't disqualify ourselves. Running, running our race, running our, our Christian walk uh, in a way that is disciplined. And, and that word discipline, we said, it has the connotation of running uh, uh, with discipline, with, with, with a mindset that allows you to maneuver and get through different situations in your life without throwing tantrums, without throwing or going through life with a bad attitude. Because I've seen some saints with bad attitudes. And I believe that God doesn't want us to run an undisciplined life. But he wants us to run in a way that is disciplined and structured. On today, and you can go to the next one, the, 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 the point and observation that I want to leave with you today is that we should run with focus. Say, run with focus. God desires for us to run with focus. And what we mean by running with focus, it is running in the sense that, uh, and I think many of you may have heard me uh, speak of this illustration. If you have ever watch um, a horse and... Uh, the horse has blinders in their race as they run their race. And I think I've even noticed it even with um, dogs as they run races. But the connotation is that the, what's happening is they have blinders on to help them stay in their lane. They have blinders on to help them to keep from focusing in on what's going on this side and this side. They're not even focusing in on what's behind them, but they're focusing on what is ahead of them. God is trying to bring us to a place in our lives as we have gone through various challenges, as we've gone through various highs and lows. And I think I even said last week, if you don't have, if you're not having highs and lows in your life, God is really not challenging you. God is working in your life when you are experiencing highs and lows, because what happens is those highs and lows keep us close to God. It helps to keep us focused on God, because when everything is going well, Oh, we, we kind of put God on the back burner. We have money in our pocket, got a good job to go to. But what happens when you go in on tomorrow or when you, when, or when you uh, what they usually do, they usually let you go on Fridays. <laughs> but what happens when you get to Thursday night and God, you had a good week praising God, had a praise in your mouth, in your mouth and your feet on the hallelujah side. But what happens when you get up? on Friday morning and about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the evening, what happens to you when they come and give you a pink slip and say, thank you very much for your services? How do you respond to that? Are you going to say, God, I thank you? Or are you going to say, God, why did this happen to me? Are you going to go to cussing? Are you going to go to smoking? Are you going to go home and beat the dog and kick the dog? Hopefully not. How are you going to respond to life's challenges? And what God is trying to get us to, he's trying to get us to a place of maturity. Say maturity. He's trying to grow the saints up. I mentioned yesterday and it's all about levels of maturity. I mentioned yesterday to the leadership that there are groups, even in our church, and I'll say in our church and then even in the kingdom, but I'll just say, hey, in Shiloh, there is a 
season group. And the season group is uh, those who have been, uh, it, I won't say in the way, but they've been walking with the Lord for a long time. Yeah. You know God. You, 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 I mean, you've had some, some experiences with God. You've experienced the highs and the lows of lows. But somehow you are still standing. You are still maintaining your walk despite what happens. But then we have another group. We have a group that's growing. And this group that's growing, they are maturing in their faith. They ain't got everything together. They may fall down sometimes, and it's important for us who are mature not to kick them while they're down. I want to say that again. It's, it is important for us who are mature not to kick them while they are down, but to help them walk with them through the process. And sometimes we don't like to walk with people through the process. Hallelujah. But we got to learn to walk with, with people in the process. But I also talked about people who are watching. Yeah. There are some people who are watching and waiting for something to happen. Yeah. People who are watching and waiting for change or maybe the lack of changes. They want to keep things the way it is. But God wants us to focus, number one, on Him. We got to go deeper in our faith. We got to go deeper in our walk, and I mentioned yesterday that we're going to be going into another season of consecration, so get ready. Hallelujah. God is calling us deeper, and He's calling us up higher. It's, it's just like a building, when, you, when something is, a building is under construction, you got to go deep. And even as you're going deep, and I think I made this illustration before, sometimes as you go deep... You have to remove some things from the dirt because there's stones in the dirt. There's bad uh, soil in the dirt. And I believe what God wants us to do, he wants us to focus on what's around us. He wants us to focus on what's on the inside of us. What's going on in, on the inside of you? What's going on in your head? What's going on in your heart? Because when you think, the, the Bible says, as a man thinketh. Oh, I got some Bible readers in here today. So what are you thinking? What are you focusing in on? What are you focusing on? All of us have situations. And I believe God does not want us to focus so much on the situation, but to focus on him. I told y'all last Sunday to, to do what? Oh, y'all forgot already? I told y'all to look up. And I don't want to regurgitate so much of that from last Sunday, but you got to remember the word so you can apply it. Yeah. Hallelujah. But as I was saying, as we're working and as we're walking through our Christian walk, we got to be focused on removing the things that are in our lives and focus in on what God is revealing to us by the Spirit. And God, if you, if you, if you are really sensitive to the Holy Ghost and to His Holy Spirit, God will speak to you. He will reveal things to you in a deep way. And that's why it's important to get in a quiet place. You have to have some time where you can read passages of Scripture, and I want to say to everybody, everybody should be reading the Word every day. Amen. Every day. I have an app on my phone, and it pops up every, every day around about 1045, and it'll just give me a Scripture. And, I, and I'm in the Word every day, but that's just my reminder. I want everybody to do something different this week. Focus in on your walk. Focus, and God wants us to be disciplined in our walk. We're live, we are living this life to live again. It's just not about now. The Bible says, Paul said, I want to run in a way, I want to run in a way that I won't be preaching and to not disqualify myself. And I'm getting into my next point. Matter of fact, that's my next point. We ought to run in a way 
that we are not disqualified. Say not disqualified. God wants us to run in a way that we run our race to not disqualify ourselves. And how do we achieve this? Well, we achieve this by knowing what our purpose is. And say purpose, say purpose. We have to know what our purpose is. We have to know what our calling is. We have to know what our gifts are. And, I, and I've, said it, I've said this before to the saints. Everybody who names the Lord Jesus, everybody who is saved, and you have, have, have believed in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead, and he's, and he's reigning even now, all of us have at least one spiritual gift. Yes. And as we desire and as we have a zeal to use our one spiritual gift in the church and outside of the church, we should be running in a way that it is pleasing to God. We should be running in a way that as we focus on God, as we, as we run with discipline, that everything that has attached itself to us, it begins to fall off because we're focusing in on the glory of the Lord. And I'm saying, God, bring back a, another level of glory to the church. Bring back a level of glory that, 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 that consumes everything that is not like you. God, bring the fire back. Hallelujah. Where it consumes everything that is not like him. And that should be our prayer. God. Allow your, the, the, the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost to consume every weight, every burden, every shackle that has attached itself to me. And some of us have allowed things and shackles. It's, it's like this, like a, sh like a shackle that is attached itself to us. Can everybody see this? Let me get over here. Can everybody see this? This power. Brand. Sin is like this. We could be going in life and it's attached to us. And we're not, we're, we're not necessarily focused on it, but it's attached itself to us. And God wants us to run in a way that we're focusing, that we're disciplined, that we're following after the glory that whatever is not like him, it's going to fall off because we're pursuing his glory. Hallelujah. And I'm saying, God, take us to a level. Bring us to a level where we are pursuing you like never before. Because you know what? We're running a race. We're running an individual race. But our individual race also affects those who are connected to us. It, it affects our families. It affects future generations. That's why we have to be aware of even uh, uh, family, uh, not, I won't say curses, but family attachments. There's some things that have followed us in our bloodline. And I'm like, God, help me to identify some things in my family, and he, and he has. God, I've been, pray I've been praying, God, I rebuke the, the, the spirit of alcoholism. I rebuke the, the, the spirit of pornography. I rebuke the spirit, excuse me, I'm spitting. I re I'm rebuking it. I'm rebuking the, 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 the illness even of cancer that has come and tried to take many of the lives, even of our family members, prematurely. Hallelujah. Yes. We have to be aware. Yes. We have to be focused. We have to be disciplined. And all. It's just not about us. Yes. Hallelujah yes. to God. Yes. But I'm saying, God, help us to run in a way that as we go through this life, that we won't disqualify ourselves. When he calls our name, when he calls our name, when he calls Myron Leach, 
I want to hear him say, well done. Hallelujah. <sighs> that should be our, all of our aim. Some of, the, some of the things that we get into in life, they don't matter. Some of the, the tiffs and disagreements that we get into, it don't matter. What matters is your race. What matters is your walk, your personal walk with God. That's what really matters. Are you running a race that's pleasing to God? Are you running a race with a renewed mindset? Are you running a race that is disciplined? Are you running a race with a renewed focus? Are you running your race to not be disqualified? And when you leave here today, I want you to ask yourself all those questions. And I've got another question for you, and this is a scary question. If you checked out today, if the Lord called you into his presence, are you sure you would end up in his presence? Are you positively firmly rooted in the conviction that you will be in the presence of the Lord. If you are, amen. If you're not, I want to invite you to the altar because God wants us to run a disciplined life that matters. Hallelujah. That's what it's all for. That's what it's all for. He wants us to run a life that matters now, and that's going to set us up for eternity. Eternity matters. Yeah. We don't talk about that a whole lot, right. but it matters. Paul said, Paul said, I want to run race. Chapter 9, 27, here it is. I want to read it for you, just so, just so you know I'm not lying. Run in a way, 20, matter of fact, I'll just read 24. He said, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in a way that you may obtain it. Yeah. And everyone who comp competes for the prize is temperate in all things. I talked about temperance last week. Now, they do it for a perishable crown, things that are temporary, a metal that is not necessarily lasting. But he goes on to say in verse 30, 26, that therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, but I'm running with focus. Thus I fight not as one who just beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it unto subjection. subjection. Some of us need to go home and beat our bodies into subjection. By fasting, by praying, renewing our mind, speaking spiritual things. And if you don't know how to speak some spiritual things, call some of these elders that's on this front row. Right. Call some of these mothers and that's ministers right. on the second row. Yeah. Call some of our deacons. I'm serious, y'all. I ain't playing no games. Hallelujah. But he says, I discipline my body and bring it into Subjection, lest when I have preached to others, yeah. I myself should not be disqualified. That's right. That's right. I'm going to run not to be disqualified. Yeah. And I'm challenging all of us who are saints and believers who are connected to this ministry that you should run in a way to not 
disqualify yourself. Yeah. Let's stand. As we're running our race, we should run it away by focusing our attention on God. We should run our race pursuing all that God has for us and letting go of negative attitudes, getting rid of weights and shackles in and on our lives. Our prayer and our aim should be, God, take everything that does not matter. I don't want it. I don't need it. But take the negative taste and I'm rebuking the spirit of cigarettes even now the tobacco spirit that's bondage I'm rebuking it in the name of the Lord Jesus if you came here today and you fighting with it come to the altar today's your day to get loosed